Mm -hmm. I bring out panodrama and the next day I'm removed from all social media. Five days later, the, the attorney general recharges me on the case I'm about to go back to prison for on the 4th of July. Right, because your case is for the 4th of July. Yeah. You did 13 months. You got 13 months for the contempt of court. <clears throat> what was that charge when you were outside court and you were videoing the grooming gang? Yeah, so I've just, I've literally just spent today with my lawyers. I prepared my statement. <clears throat> Sorry, my breathing's terrible. I prepared my statement and... Um, as my defence. And basically, when I went up to that court that day, this is the facts, all provable facts. I went up to court that day. I went into court. I said, is there a reporting restriction? The man said, I don't know. So I looked. I've done training. I paid myself thousands of pounds to do my own training on, on, on the legal system because I've become a citizen journalist. And I didn't know the laws. In my first contempt case, I didn't know what I could and couldn't say. I didn't know where I could and couldn't stand. After I got my first contempt case, which was for down in... Canterbury and so people understand that there's a court case going on in Canterbury a young 15 year old child went into a takeaway a Muslim owned takeaway and asked for directions because she was drunk six of them took, them up, took her upstairs and they gang raped her all of their DNA was found on the mattress she was found shevelled walking down the street emotional crying screaming the police arrested them one of them left the country the rest of them were given bail I heard about this and I heard the court cases going on and I heard they were still running the same chicken shop. So I went down to Canterbury. As soon as I went in, I went into the business next door. I went into, the, there was another business opposite. I said, have you seen any young girls in this shop? And they said, yeah, there was young school girls in there yesterday. So for me, it's like, how can these men whose DNA was found at the scene, it's not just an allegation, their DNA was found on the child. She was raped in every hole she had, yeah, as a child. So I wanted to show people, I wanted to show people who lived in that area these men are walking your streets. Yeah? This is what's happened to a child, allegedly happened to a child. So I went to the court to do that. Now, when I went to the court to do that, the judge took them out the back so I couldn't get visual footage of them. I felt people should be warned. I still feel now, the judge at four o'clock in the morning, after I went to try and warn people, they raided my house. They took me before the judge and I was convicted because I filmed on court property. That's what I did. But I didn't know any of these laws. So... The judge, those men were convicted and given 25 years in prison. They should not have been on bail. They should not have been running the same chicken shop. That judge failed the British public to keep them safe. That's what I was prosecuted for. I was then given a, uh, I was then given a, I was then given a, um, a suspended sentence. So when I went up to court this time, I done everything right. Trust me. Yeah? I went in. I asked about and the and the legislation on the judiciary website says. And I read it, specifically says, a judge has no power to put a reporting restriction on any information that's already in the public domain. So I go in, I ask about a reporting restriction, they don't tell me. I look on the judiciary website, it says that there should be a confirmation on the screen and confirmation on the courtroom door. I've got pictures of both. Yeah? There was no word of any reporting restriction. I went on the court website, no word of any reporting restriction. So I generally thought it's been lifted because the case is over, the, the, the jury are making their decision. But because I wasn't sure, I'd done everything still. I didn't tell anyone any of the verdicts. I knew the verdicts of the first part. I didn't assume guilt. I asked them two simple questions. How are you feeling about your verdict? And I was whisked from outside the court. I was taken before a judge. I was refused my legal representation. I was not even asked if I was guilty or not guilty. And within two hours, I was sentenced to 30 months in jail. <laughs> and, and not just when, and when this happens, from my point of view, I've watched all this happen. I'm then sitting in prison. And I'm watching as human rights lawyers and every journalist in the country is bending over each other to give a justified reason as to why I should be in jail. And if, you, if, if ever you can see, and this is just so, and how they're not doing this themselves, let me just show you. If ever you can see how out of touch they are with the British public, and that's why I truthfully believe on the 4th of July I'll go back to jail, because they're so out of touch. If you, oh, I've got no internet. If you go on YouTube and you put in Tommy Robinson sent to prison, Channel 4, Sky News, BBC, all done big hit pieces, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, telling the country this is why he's in jail and he deserves to be in jail. 